I'm the Reverend Brianne Swan, and this is Sermons from the East End for Tuesday, September 17th, 2024. Hello and welcome to week two of the season of creation here with East and United Regional Ministry. Today we are looking at humanity and our place within creation, exploring both the first and the second creation stories in Genesis. You will notice that this episode has a little bit of a different form factor. Normally, I re-record my sermons for the podcast format. However, as you will see in a few minutes, this week, that was just going to be impossible. And so the audio for this podcast is taken directly from the live stream of East End United Regional Ministries Sunday morning worship service. There were so many people who came together to make worship happen on Sunday morning. I hope you find this episode as meaningful as we found that worship experience. Our scripture reading this morning is from Genesis 1, verses 26 to 28. Then God said, let us make humanity in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. So God created humanity in his image. In the image of God, they created them. Male and female, all God created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Then God formed a human being from the dust of the ground and breathed into the nostrils the breath of life, and the human being became a living creature. And God planted a garden in Eden in the east. They took the human being and put the human being in the garden of Eden to serve and preserve it. And then out of the ground, God formed every animal in the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the human being. I am the first human being, the voice of the human being in reading one. I am Adam and Eve. I am humanity. I am the first human being, the voice of the human being in reading two. I am Adam and Eve and humanity. God made me in a special way. The word of God in Genesis 1 says so. God made me in a special way. The word of God in Genesis 2 says so. I am created in the image of God. Do you understand? the very image of God. I have been made personally by God. Do you understand? By God's own hands. I am like God, created in God's own likeness. I am liked by God. I even live in a garden where God likes to walk and talk. I have human reason. That makes me superior to all other living creatures. Superior, get it? I am flesh taken from earth itself and breath that comes from God. So I am kin with all other creatures. We are family. Do you understand? Family. Family? Fiddlesticks. I have dominion over all creatures. I dominate. I tame. I rule all the other creatures, your family. I have a partnership with all other creatures. We are friends. We are partners. 
I am authorized by God to subdue earth, to harness nature, to put creation under my feet. Yes, to control your friends. I have been given the responsibility by God to serve earth and preserve it, to care for earth as God's garden. I can conquer creation. I rule. I rule. I groan with creation. When you rule, I suffer. I suffer. I am the king of earth. I bear the image of God. I am king over creation. I rule. I am servant of earth, caring for creation. I am king. I am empire. God said so. God said so. I am servant. I am caregiver. God said so. I have God's word on my side. Sure you have. But I'm sure you've noticed God seems to have a lot of words. Do you have all the words? Do you have the final word? I invite you to pray with me. Holy and loving God, may the words from my mouth and the meditations on all of our hearts gathered both here and at screens this morning be pleasing to you. Amen. And so we have these two very separate creation stories in Genesis. And they are both very, very different. The first account, which Andy started last week and Susan continued just a few minutes ago, speaks of a creation that is, that is very structured. Everything at its time and everything in its place. There was probably a flowchart. But there also, at least at first read with my Western capitalist influenced mind, there's a hierarchy with human beings being given dominion over the flora and the fauna. God creates it all, says that it's good to go, and then is kind of just, okay, have at her. The second story in Genesis 2 invites us to consider a more intimate and relational version of creation with God getting right down into the dirt forming Adam from the soil and breathing life into them actually rather than God simply creating humanity God creates a single individual Adam and then a very specific companion Eve in this version, creation is not a one-time act, but an ongoing journey of God and humans kind of struggling along and trying to figure each other out. Very soon, snakes start talking. Apples are eaten, women are scapegoated, and then God starts in with, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. Adam and Eve are expelled from the garden. Adam and Eve have babies. And one of those babies will kill the other. And on it goes. And on it goes. You came to take us. All things go, all things go to recreate us. All things grow, all things grow. We humans never really quite seem to get it right. And the Bible is filled with story after story that tells the same story. 
Do you remember in July, I told you about my very, very wise friend who said that there was really only one story in the Bible. It is a story in four parts. And it goes, we are so gloriously alive. And we are so weepingly lost. But an ancient love rolls on, refuses not to roll on. And again, we are so gloriously alive. There is really only one story in the Bible. There are a lot of words. There are so many words. But this, I wonder if this is the final word. There is really only one story in the Bible, and it gets told over and over again by many different people in many, many different ways. And sometimes it is told in layers upon layers with each other. And how we tell these stories, the words that we use, that is all important too. The way these stories have traditionally been told, especially the first creation account, there is an emphasis on the setting both apart and above of humanity. There's a separation. The emphasis is not of our inextricable connection to the rhythm of creation. And that rhythm of creation, as we hear it in Genesis, is a very intentional rhythm. It is music. When the universe was a formless void, God notices what is missing. God responds and makes a thing. God names it good. There is evening and there is morning, and that is a day, and it goes. Last week, Stefan and the choir began a six-week series of sharing music by American songwriter and composer, Sufjan Stevens. We started exploring the mystery of love, the great love that is beyond perfect description. This great and holy love seeks relationship with creation, with us over and over again despite our struggles and our shortcomings. Actually, perhaps especially because of our struggles and our shortcomings. Sufyan, and I feel like I can call him by his first name because I've been sitting a lot with his music lately. Sufyan has this beautiful approach to composing his songs where each instrument has a very simple musical phrase that gets repeated over and over again. And each phrase on its own, it isn't really much. I know, Maria, you had a few comments about your phrase. I'm terribly in the drop, but to me, I'm not part of it. <laughs> and And just because I love the trumpet so very, very much, JJ, would you play your phrase for us? So as you just heard when everyone was playing together, and as you will experience again in just a few minutes, layered together, these phrases form something that is truly beautiful. Truly beautiful. No one instrument, no one voice even, can carry this song. 
The way we tell these stories matters. And the pieces that we emphasize matter. The first account in Genesis with its order and its structure can leave the impression that the world is neat and tidy. That humanity is somehow above the rest of creation, managing it from a distance. But that second account with its dirt and its intimacy reminds us that we are not above creation, but part of it. We are from the very earth herself. In this layered creation song, we are just one instrument repeating our simple phrases alongside the rhythms of the sun and the moon, the birds and the trees, the oceans and the stars. Each plays a part in the symphony of existence, none more important than the other. And the song of creation is ongoing. It didn't stop on the seventh day. We are all participants in it. Every breath, every step, every relationship we cultivate is part of this ongoing creation. We are always being made and remade. And sometimes we make a lot of mistakes. Sometimes the making and the mistaking and the going and the growing and the loving, sometimes it sounds chaotic. Sometimes it sounds dissonant, as if everything's out of tune. But even then, the layers keep building and the song keeps moving. And if we listen carefully enough, we can hear that everything Everything still fits together. And so what if instead of dominion over creation, we, and I mean in a very embodied kind of way, because I know we know all of this intellectually, but what if we embodied an understanding of our role as something much more intimate? What if our task is to participate within creation, to listen for the rhythm, to paint the colors that Susan talked about, to join in with our simple phrase? We are, in fact, simple creatures. What if we as a species stopped trying to control the world and instead sought to harmonize with it? The stories we tell ourselves about creation and about God and about ourselves shape how we live. If we see ourselves as disconnected from creation, we will live disconnected lives. But if we remember that we are all made of the same dust, all breathing the same breath of life that God gave humanity in the very, very beginning, a breath that is of God, God's self, then perhaps we will live in a way that honors the connection that we share with all things. All things go, all things grow, and we are not separate from that. And so with Stefan's patience, because remember, I am definitely the weak link in this worship team, I would like us all to listen again to this song of creation played out in real time. The congregation can consider this prep for your upcoming invitation to sing along with the choir. Together we present the Song of Creation, Sufian style. In the beginning, when all was a formless void, the spirit of life danced over the deep, and the pulse of love moved through the darkness. And then, love spoke and said, let there be light. 
and there was light, radiant, glowing, embracing. And love saw that the light was good. And love named the light day, and the darkness love named night, and there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Love spoke again and said, let there be a vast sky between the waters, and let the heavens stretch wide a canopy of hope. And it was so. Love called the sky heaven, and there was evening and there was morning, the second day. And love whispered to the waters, gather together, and let dry land and ground appear where life may flourish. The waters flowed, the earth emerged, and love called the dry land earth. And the gathered waters love named seas. And love saw that it was good. And then love said, let the earth be filled with growing things, plants that bear seeds and trees heavy with fruit. And it was so. The earth burst with life, green and vibrant. And love saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And love gazed at the heavens and said, let there be lights to guide the way, to mark the days, the seasons, and the years. Let them shine upon the earth. And it was so. Love made the sun to rule the day, and the moon to brighten the night, and the stars to twinkle in the dark like promises. And love saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And then love said, let the waters be filled with living beings. Let the sky be filled with winged creatures soaring free. The oceans teemed with life, creatures great and small, and the sky sang with the beating of wings. And love saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. Love filled with joy spoke once more. Let the earth bring forth living creatures, animals of every kind, wild and domestic, crawling and leaping, and it was so. The earth is stirred with life, each creature unique, and love saw that it was good. And then love in the fullness of all things said, let us create beings in our image, diverse, wondrous, each reflecting the heart and the mystery of love. Let them care for the earth and all that is upon it the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the creatures of the land. And so love created humankind in love's own image. In the image of love, God created them. Each one sacred, each one worthy, and each one very, very good. Love blessed them and said, be fruitful and flourish. Fill the earth and care for it. Tend to the creatures and to one another with gentleness and grace. And it was so. Love looked upon all that had been made, the light and the sky, the earth and its creatures, and love saw that it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. And 
with us, the heavens and the earth were completed in all of their fullness. And on the seventh day, love rested and love dwelled in the midst of it all. May it be so. Amen.
East End United Regional Ministry is committed to supporting our neighbours throughout the East End of Toronto. We run a weekly food bank market out of our Glen Rhodes campus on Gerrard Street, as well as out of the cold from our Eastminster campus on Danforth Avenue. We actively support refugees and asylum seekers, and are public, intentional, and explicit of our affirmation and advocacy for two-spirited and LGBTQIA peoples. We gather for worship on-site and online Sunday mornings at our Eastminster campus and Thursday evenings at our Glen Rhodes campus. We are a community working to figure out how to embody the words of Cornell West who said justice is what love looks like in public. We don't always get it right, but we are committed to working for progress even as we acknowledge that we are a work in progress. If any of this sounds interesting, we would love to meet you. Feel free to send me, Reverend Brianne, an email, bswan, B-S-W-A-N, at eastendunited.ca. I would love to connect over coffee, either in person or online. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. And a special thank you to our music director, Stefan Ermel, our choir, our musical guests for making this episode and Sunday worship happen this week. Next week, we will be back discussing the flora and the fauna of creation. But until then, take care of yourselves and each other. We'll see you soon. East End United Regional Ministry is an affirming community of faith within the United Church of Canada. You can learn more about our community, including our many outreach programs, by going to www.eastendunited.ca.